What is going on YouTube? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. Today, we got a video looking at the top 10 key comics from the amazing year of 1981. This is a fresh new video series, the second part in the decade of the 80s, where we are counting down the top 10 key comics from each year from the decade. We did the year 1980 a couple weeks back. If you haven't checked out that video, please go check that one out too. The order of these books are just from the release date starting in January of 81 all the way to December of 81. So folks, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the links in the description below as well. And before we get in to these 10 awesome nostalgic books i got to take less than 60 seconds to thank today's sponsor popculturezone.com popculturezone.com is an online shop focusing on hot new comics including exclusive and incentive variants cgc graded comics and tons of other inventory including pop culture toys and other collectibles all at low and competitive prices PopCultureZone.com ships all over the U.S. And if you are buying raw comics, they offer flat rate shipping of only $4.99. That's right, $4.99. Absolute craziness, right? And there's no taxes included, excluding New Jersey. Pop Culture Zone is also on eBay, where they hold a 100% positive feedback rating with over 8,000 completed transactions for this year alone. Make sure to check out the link to their website below as well as their eBay link. So be sure to give them a follow there as well. All right. Who's ready for 10 hot books from 1981? Let's go. <laughs> First book on the list. We got Daredevil action. This is Daredevil 168. First appearance of Elektra Ice. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I think Elektra is a undervalued character in my humble opinion but maybe it's just me and i'm biased <laughs> released january of 1981 with frank miller doing the deeds writer and artist doing what frank miller does best we had a cover price of this book at 50 cents with the current average value of 206 dollars now again that is a raw value uh if you guys are looking at these books saying well maybe this is a book that I might be interested in looking at or picking up. When you're looking at these numbers, just keep in mind that this is an average value. It doesn't pertain to grade. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. I always like to look at it as saying that you could find a book or this book anywhere kind of a little under or even over this 206 $206 is kind of a median range, right? Current 9.8 fair market value sitting at 3700 and $14. So real solid value on those graded 9.8s. And I do want to let everyone know here, folks, uh, I, I always talk about books and values and possible books to invest in. I always let you guys know that I am not here to tell you guys what to buy, what not to buy. I want you guys to collect how you love. If you are loving the characters or interested in the stories or you're willing to you know, take the risk of investment or to speculate on a book, you got to make sure you got all those ducks lined up and that it's for you and it's a purchase decision that you are not going to regret moving forward. I'm here to give you some facts, some data, and of course, my own personal opinion. But let's move on to book number nine on the list. And we got some Star Wars action with Star Wars 43. This is the first appearance of Lando and the second appearance of Boba Fett. This book was also released January of 1981 with writer Archie Goodwin and artist Al Williamson. Cover price, of course, still 50 cents. Current average value, $39. Decently uh, uh, affordable book from 1981. Current 9.8 fair market value, sitting at about $309. All right. Book number eight. Uncanny X-Men 141. Boy, was Chris Claremont and John Byrne doing their thing in the early 80s. First appearance of Rachel Summers, Pyro, Avalanche, and of course, this was the beginning of Days of Future Past. One of my all-time favorite X-Men story arcs, hands down. Of course, writer Chris Claremont 
and artist John Byrne. Cover price, 50 cents. Uh, current average value, $119. This is a book that I do not have in my collection that I really hope to have one day. And it's it's definitely, I don't, personally, I don't think this book is slowing down for the long term anytime soon. You know, ebb and flow, peaks and valleys here and there, whatever. You know, we look at what, everything that's going on in the, in the market, sure. But uh, this is one for, for the ages that I think is going to definitely hold long term. Current 9.8 fair market value, hitting over that $1,100 mark, $1,110. Dollars. All right. X-Men, guys. X-Men, man. Book number seven on the list. Another Daredevil. This is Daredevil 170, first kingpin in Daredevil title, which is uh, amazing to think about. I mean, it took uh, up until 1981 to get this, you know, duel, this, this tag team, this versus, not tag team, I guess it is just a, a versus <laughs> of Daredevil. And Kingpin, who we just, you know, we think that they're so connected by it. But of course, Kingpin was more tied to Spider-Man in the early days of the Silver Age. Uh, but this is also where Kingpin's name is revealed. We know that he is now Wilson Fisk in this book. Uh, released February of 1981. Again, Frank Miller doing the, uh, the writing and the art. Cover price, 50 cents. Courage average value, $21. Current 9.8 fair market value, 312 a book that I think has a lot of growth potential, really. I really do. I think this one, I don't want to say it's been undervalued. I want to say it's been overlooked. But of course, if a book's been overlooked, you can, you know, correlate that to being possibly undervalued, right? I mean, they, they kind of go hand in hand. So, uh, really good one. If you're really in the market for this, I mean, I think it's a good one to search those back issue bins in your comic shops or, you know, there's, there's probably some really good deals to be had. For a book like this out there right now. Moving on, book number six, Marvel Team Up 103. This is the second full appearance of Taskmaster. And I think this is another one that's also kind of overlooked. I think there's a good handful of Marvel Team Up stuff that doesn't get a lot of the recognition that it necessarily deserves. Um, this one was released in March of 1981. Writer David Michelini. With artist Jerry Brigham, another 50 cent cover price. Look at this, folks. Current average value, $9. I think I just sold one for like eight. It was like maybe a fine. So, you know, there you go. Mid, mid grade and average value, nine. Seems kind of right, right? Current 9.8 fair market value, $232. Very affordable second appearance here. Of course, it's his third overall appearance, but second full. All right, moving on to the top five on the list, or the last five. I don't want to call them top five. But before we do, I do have to remind you all, if you are in need of BCW supplies, or excuse me, <laughs> no, I'm not brainwashing you to just go after BCW, but if you are in need of comic book supplies, I do highly recommend BCW, folks, and I say this all the time. I stand by BCW. I don't just use BCW, but I do use them for the majority of of my comic book supplies. You could save 10% off of your orders from bcwsupplies.com by using the code CHERNOS. This code never expires. You could use it as many times as you want. And with you know rising prices out there with everything and the economy the way it is, saving any little bit definitely helps and goes a long way. So definitely check that out. This link is in the description below as well. But we got five more books, folks. Number five. We got Iron Man 150, amazing, amazing, classic, early JRJR cover. This is a classic Doom cover and a tie-in to the Doom Quest story arc. This book was released in June of 1981. Writer, tag team, David Michelini and Bob Layton doing their thing. And of course, John Romita Jr., um, I have my feelings about some of his most recent work over the last 15 years or so, but what he was doing in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, uh, was awesome, awesome stuff. Cover price on this one was 75 cents just because it was a double-sized uh, special, so uh, that's, that's why the 75 cents, it wasn't because of inflation yet. <laughs> current average uh, value raw, $31 with the current... 9.8 fair market value, 
of $450. Book number four. Yes, folks, DC was producing key comics back then, but I will say it seems that DC was a little bit dry in the early 1980s. But we got a good one right here. This is Green Lantern 141, the first appearance of the Omega Men. This was released June of 1981 with awesome iconic writer Marv Wolfman and artist Joe Statton. Cover, though, by the one and only, rest his soul, George Perez. Cover price on this was 50 cents. Current average value, $36, with a current 9.8 fair market value of $435. All right, three more to go. Number three, yeah. <laughs> Avengers Annual number 10. Oh, the good old first appearance of Rogue and first cover appearance of Mystique. Let's not forget that. Uh, of course, Chris Claremont. Who else was writing uh, anything that had to do with the X-Men back in these days? Chris Claremont on the writing with artist Michael Golden. Cover price, $0.75 cents on the King Size Annual. Current average value sitting just over $100 at that 104 mark. With a current 9.8 fair market value of $1,040. This is one that I do say, you know, uh, I this is a long-term book, in my humble opinion, all day, every day. And I highly believe, and again, don't, don't take this as me saying, oh, go buy this book now and FOMO out on it. If we get any type of hint that Rogue is going to show up in the MCU, I do believe that this book is going to double overnight. But again, even with me saying that, guys, don't go FOMO on any book. Do your research. Have patience. Um, there's always ebb and flow, uh, even for solid keys when it comes to MCU. I mean, look at Thanos' first appearance. Uh, it dipped hard after Endgame, but it's it's definitely been on a very positive upward trajectory uh, since so um, just be careful with whatever you do. But all these X-Men books, not all of them, but many of these X-Men books are solid books to at least ponder right now. Just because when we start getting the influx of X-Men, you know, news for the MCU, I think a lot more attention and demand is going to go to these books. Moving on to Justice League 193. Some more DC. Woo! This is the first appearance of All-Star Squadron. And another classic, classic George Perez. But this was released in August of 1981. Jerry Conaway, one of my favorite, favorite Bronze Age writers. I think, uh, you know, you, you got a good amount of them out there. Danny O'Neill was, was another one. Of course, Frank Miller. Jerry Conway, I, I, I don't know if he gets as much talk as he deserves, but... Uh, writer on this book with, of course, George Perez doing the art. Cover price, 50 cents. Current average value, very affordable book, $9 with the current 9.8 fair market value of only 116 All right, folks, in the last book on the list today from 1981, Spectacular Spider-Man number 64, the first appearance of Cloak and Dagger. What an awesome team. Uh, we got, uh, released in December 1981, we got writer Bill Mantillo, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, big shout out to uh, Bill and Ed Hannigan, the artist, for uh, doing what they did with these, these two characters. Um, I think even today, there's a lot more that could be done with these characters. I would even love to see them in the MCU. Their Hulu TV show was, was solid for those two, two seasons. I actually thought it was a a really decently done show could I mean could have been better I can gripe all I want but I would love to see them in the MCU for sure cover price on this was 60 cents now we see inflation hitting a little bit <laughs> current average value $81 with the current 9.8 fair market value of 568 this one has definitely been gaining some uh, some ground over the last few years for sure so there's our 10 books from 1981 folks I can't wait for the best year in the 80s. Coming up next, 1982. That's right, the year of the greatest album ever released, Thriller. <laughs> but stay tuned for that. 
Uh, coming real soon, folks. But before we go today, I do want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below and what you thought of these 10 books on this list. Let me know if you thought there were any other recognizable key comics from 1981 that weren't on this list. And of course, I have to give a big shout out and thank you to all of my wonderful members. Uh, to First to my Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for the continued support month after month. For anybody interested, the link's below. It's only $3.99 a month. I will be announcing my October Patreon giveaway real, real shortly here. Big shout out to each and every one of you. Matt, Trev the Shipping Guru, John Rowe, Nexus Cowboy, Comic Book Museum, Verify, Randall, Tex, Justin, Jordan, X11, Shelby, Rich, Tony, Larry, Michael, Alvin, Fletch, Pedro, Peter, Sagi, Dan, and Simon. Thank you guys so much. And of course, to my YouTube channel members, that's only $1.99 a month. And to all of you, thank you guys so much. Again, Jimmy G, you... Uh, you know, you had a little blunder a couple weeks ago on, on, on the football field, but you came back last week and, and you got the win for us. Much love to you, Jimmy G. <laughs> Sean, Paul, Shadow Rat, Remy, Tim, Frisbee, that Mountaineer, the Card Bay, uh, C Axe, Louis Logic, Christopher Johnson, Pickle Rick Flair, Jack B, Mikey, Goonish Lurker, Brandon, Nexus, uh, Lisa, Buddy, Josh, Ariel Red. Matt Labno, Battle Delta, Comic Journey, X11, Bravo, Joshua, E-Dub, Mick, Arthur, Simon, Comic Ozzy, Kaya, B, Ghost Junk, Primetime, Rupert, Luis, Tony, and Chris. You guys are awesome. Thank you all for being here. Like I said, stay tuned for 1982. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. Click the notification bell so you get those pings from when that 1982 video comes out. Thank you guys for watching. Be well, and until next time.